In this lecture, I'm going to show you how to go about writing a simple academic text. We're aiming here for a short essay of about a thousand words, the kind that you'll be writing for your final assignment, or perhaps a section of an academic article. However, as all academic texts are basically structured in the same way, the principles are the same, irrespective of length. That's to say, you would go about planning a chapter, a book or a thesis in exactly the same way. You just have to add a bit more detail. To begin with, you need a theme or a subject. In real life, this may have been given to you by a tutor, if you're still a student, or by a project leader or an editor, if you're a researcher. Or you may have come up with it yourself. Of course, the first thing you'll do is to research that topic finding out what other authors have written about it and uncovering the facts. Often, the idea for a text emerges naturally from this research. You find that there's a gap in the literature about a certain aspect, and so you decide to make this your niche. Or you may discover a controversy that you'd like to get involved in, or a problem that hasn't yet been fully worked through. Once you've got your topic, the next stage is to brainstorm it. This just means generating as many ideas as you can without concern as yet for the selection or the ordering. It's particularly useful to do this with other people if you have the chance, as you can bounce ideas off each other and open up areas of interest that you may not otherwise have thought of. You should note these ideas down as they come up. But you don't have to worry about rigour or accuracy at this point. That will come later. Let's take as an example the topic, the effects of the Bologna process upon the Portuguese higher education system. Now, you might think, first of all, about the restructuring of the degree courses that took place in the last decade and the introduction of the shorter three-year bachelor's course widely scorned as light degrees compared to the old four or five year ones. This then might remind you that some of the professional associations in Portugal have refused to accept the new bachelors as the equivalent of the old licenciatura, prompting the development of the combined masters. Then you might remember that masters and doctorate dissertations have become shorter than they used to be. And the teaching methods have changed often producing larger classes and fewer contact hours, which requires more student autonomy. Lessons are now given in English in some departments in order to attract foreign students. And of course, the European Credit Transfer and Accumulation System, or ECTS, has now been implemented to facilitate mobility between European institutions. There have also been changes on the level of academic recruitment, which has become more meritocratic in recent years, less subject to pressures of traditional patronage. Now we've got a, a sizeable list of ideas to work with. And there are already some clusters emerging of things that could be grouped together. The next stage in the process is to select what we want to include in our text and group them so as to have just a few main points in the body of the essay rather than a lot of dispersed ones. For this, I like to use a mind map structure as I find it helps me cluster things together. There's now mind mapping software available, if you can't think without a, a computer, um, but personally, I still prefer to use a pen and paper for this part of the process. I find that if I leave my desk and lie down or, or sit on a comfortable chair, it seems to help release the creative energies. A mind map is a non-linear method of producing or recording information using bubbles, branches, arrows, colours, cross-references, etc. It's a personal thing, so you really need to develop your own style. But in this case, I would do my mind map something like this. First, I'd start by putting the main topic in the centre of the page. I'm just going to write Bologna, Portugal as a kind of shorthand for the full title. Then I can start adding bubbles. The restructuring of the degrees is obviously an important area, so I'd start with that. 
uh, making it the heading for a secondary bubble, which I'll hierarchically mark using a square box. Then, I can put things branching off this, the new shorter degrees, the combined masters, and the reasons for its existence. Now I'm going to create another secondary bubble for teaching methods, as that's also an important area. Here, I'm going to present greater student autonomy as a consequence of the bigger classes and fewer contact hours, but it doesn't have to be presented like that. A third category might be the fact that the Portuguese education system has now been able to open up to foreign students, partly by the use of the credit system, but also through having lessons in English. And of course, this also links back to teaching methods again. Finally, I'm going to create another branch for academic recruitment, to which I'll add a new idea that I've only just thought of, the fact that publications now count for more than they used to with a consequent reduction in the relative weight of institutional service. Now we can move on to the third stage in the planning process, which is to choose the text model that we feel best lends itself to the material that we have here. There are a variety of different models available, and the most important ones are described in reference file 6. In this case, we could perhaps choose a simple list model, which could be used either just to give the information or to give information and then briefly evaluate it. Alternatively, we might prefer the discursive model, which would enable us to assess the benefits and the drawbacks of the Bologna process more effectively. Whichever you choose, you would then need to transfer the information from your mind map to a plan, which is essentially a schema showing the format that your text will take. You may not necessarily use all the information that you've got on, from the mind map. If it's particularly complex, you may choose to use only a section of it here and to reserve the rest for another text. Although your plan is necessarily going to have an introduction, development and a conclusion, I usually think that it's a good idea to begin with the development section and to, to leave the introduction to later. If we're using the list model, then this is quite straightforward. We would talk about each of the four areas in turn, beginning with the one that we consider to be most important. And so, Transferring the information from the mind map to the plan, we get something like this. If we chose to use the discursive model instead, one possible approach might be to assess the benefits and the drawbacks of the new system in turn. In this plan, the benefits have been listed first, followed by the drawbacks. But we could just as easily choose to deal with each topic in turn and discuss the advantages and the disadvantages of each. These are not the only ways in which this material could be approached. It could also be presented using the comparison contrast model, perhaps comparing the situation today with how it was 15 years ago, looking at different issues in turn. Or we could even possibly use a process or sequence model. Though in this case, we'd have to have a very clear idea about the order in which each change was implemented. Ultimately though, what is important is to choose the model that best suits your rhetorical purpose. There are no fixed rules in this respect. Now that you've got the body of the text planned, you can turn your attention to the introduction. This should not be difficult, as these tend to fo follow a fairly standard format. Usually, you would use the introduction to present the topic, state the aim of the text, define any keywords that may be subject to misinterpretation, and give an overview of the main information. Then, and only then, you're ready to start writing. If you've planned your text carefully, then writing up should not be too problematic. 
It's just a question of presenting your ideas as clearly and precisely as possible and linking them together using appropriate cohesive devices. This is why in an examination situation or when, do you, when you're under pressure, it's best to spend a good part of the available time in the planning of your text. There's absolutely no point to sitting down to write and hoping that the ideas will form as you go along. That might be all right for poetic writing, but the stream of consciousness style is not appropriate in academia. In a short essay of the kind that you'll be asked to write here as an assignment, each of the sections of your plan would correspond to a paragraph of 50 or 100 words, say. So, you, the essay using the list model that we planned earlier would basically have six paragraphs, four in the body and one each for the introduction and conclusion. The first part of each point would become the topic sentence and the rest would come after as part of the development of that idea. If on the other hand you're writing a book or a thesis, each of these points would become a separate chapter. As for the conclusion, well, in my experience, that usually arises naturally out of the main text. It's just a question of tying up the loose ends, signalling to the reader that you're drawing to a close. There's no need to add anything new. Typical closing gambits include summarising the main points you've made, describing the consequences of the scenario that you've depicted, or suggesting directions for further study. Now, have a look at the exercises for this lesson.